everybody, it's Nikki. Welcome back to my channel. As you can tell from the title, I am no longer 21. It was my 22nd birthday yesterday, so thank you to everyone who took their time to greet me or send me things. It really, really did make my day, especially because I live alone and currently Metro Manila is in modified enhanced community quarantine. <laughs> Mouthful. So, um, I don't get the chance to see any friends and I haven't seen my family since like January so I was anticipating that my birthday was going to be pretty sad this year but a handful of people have proven me wrong so again thank you so so much uh, I feel so grateful and very happy <laughs> as you can tell from the way I set up this video this is gonna be a chill kind of chatty video because I want to tell you guys 21 things that I learned in my 21st year. I learned a lot of things this year, as I do with every other year, but the 21 things I'm about to mention are things that I had to relearn a lot in my 21st year of life because I couldn't quite understand it the first time around. And the reason why I'm sharing it is because I'm a firm believer that life is about giving, whether it's love, care, kindness, or knowledge. Um, so this is my 22nd birthday gift to anyone who's watching. Hopefully you have something to take away from this video. If not, then welcome to learning about how naive Nikki can be. <laughs> so starting off with number one, um, being confident does not equate to being cocky. Now this is something I've had to relearn over and over again because growing up I've always been quite confident and this is because my parents would always reassure me of my strengths. Um, this is not to say that they never acknowledged my flaws and my weaknesses because they did. So I have always been aware of what I'm not good at, what um, are considered flaws in society. Therefore I am also aware of what my strengths are. And a lot of people would take that as being cocky. I would walk into a room, you know, just pretty confidently because I'm, again, fully aware of what I can and can't do. And I would have people come up to me and tell me that, I'm trying to translate it into English, but I'll say it in the Gagal. People would tell me, alam mo, pagpasok mo pa lang sa classroom, Sobrang yabang na nang dating mo. And that, to me, I, I would ask them, like, but I haven't even said anything or done anything. And they would tell me it's in the way I carry myself. And, you know, it's just the way I walk. And the way I... And it's... What does that have to do with being cocky? At first, that took a big hit on my self-esteem. Because... I then thought that I had to behave a certain way in order for people to not think that I was cocky. Because I wasn't trying to be cocky. But when I met the right people, the right set of friends, I then learned that, yeah, being confident doesn't mean you're cocky. It just means you're aware of what you can and can't do. You're aware of what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. So you just carry yourself confidently because there's nothing to be ashamed of. Number two, beauty is subjective. Everyone is beautiful in their own personal way. Now this is something that took me ages to learn because growing up in two different places, I could never fit in to their norms or what they thought was beautiful. In Hong Kong, I was um, too dark and too short. In the Philippines, I was too tall and too chubby. So, I never really felt beautiful. There are some things that you can't control and one of those things are people's opinions. And so, eventually I learned to accept that this is the way I look and there is not much I can do about it. Um, I mean, there is. I could work out, but I mean, there's not much I can do about the way people think. And their 
views on beauty is different from mine, and that's okay. Number three, falling out of love with your passion is normal. Now, as you guys know, I graduated with a degree in dance, um, so obviously, performing arts specifically is my passion. I just decided to focus on dance. And there came a point when I didn't want to dance. I just didn't. Like, I was so tired of it because it was all I did for four years. And it was just so exhausting. There was so much research, so much time, so much sleepless nights that went into getting my diploma that at the end of it all, I just didn't want to do it. <laughs> I was so tired and, you know, now I'm slowly starting to fall in love with dancing again. Um, slowly but surely. And I realize that it's okay to feel burnt out because at least in a way, you know that means that you work really hard. And it's okay to rest. It's okay to kind of put it aside for a bit. Number four. This is gonna sound a little negative, but it's it's true. Not a lot of people will be there to support you, but when you make it, there's gonna be a lot of people who's gonna congratulate you. And that's okay. Sometimes the best things, not everyone is gonna support it at first. Like, I feel like we constantly put pressure on ourselves. Nah. We think, if no one's supporting me now, no one's gonna support me in the future. And that's so wrong. You know, sometimes people don't understand what you're doing until they see the final product. That being said, also appreciate the people who support you from the start. It's, it's, there's nothing wrong with the amount of supporters you have. What matters is you just do it. Don't ever think that, oh, I shouldn't do this anymore because I don't have that much support. No, just just do it because at the end, there might be a lot of supporters because they finally understand what you're trying to do. Number five, it is better to have a small group of friends who will defend your name when you're not around as opposed to knowing so many people that they have nothing good to say about. Know that Having a lot of friends is, it's nice, yes, but it's better to have just that set of people who you know, you know for sure, will do right by you, no matter what. Number six, no response is a response. And I know this can come off a little negative, but sometimes it's not. You know, sometimes someone doesn't respond to you because they're genuinely busy, or sometimes they don't respond to you because they don't want to. But the fact that there's no response is response enough. Number seven, always give people a chance to change and grow. Whether they do or do not change is beyond you, but at least give them the chance or the opportunity to be aware of something that they can change about themselves in order to become a better person. A lot of times we'll, we'll, we'll have friends who may say or do certain things that we might not like or agree with, but we let it slide because, oh, that's just the way they are, which is, yes, accept your friends or who they are, but if they're doing something that affects you and other people as well, I think it's fair that you let them know that something they're doing is affecting you and other people. If you're given the opportunity to let someone know, do it. But also, don't be condescending when you let them know. Don't be like, oh, you're like this, and you're like that, and everybody hates it. No. You still have to be kind. You have to talk to them properly. Respect begets respect. So, you know, let people know what they can do to be better, but don't do it in a kind of condescending manner. Number eight. <laughs> Sometimes you have to forgive people even if they don't apologize, especially if you deserve an apology. And I have had to learn this the hard way. I have had to forgive so many people who never apologized for hurting me so bad. To this day, I still have a lot of people who didn't apologize to me, not even an explanation. Like they can't even look at me. That's, 
Okay, they can't even look at me. But I forgive them because what good is it to hold anger and to have a grudge against someone who doesn't quite know how to handle it? I would give them the opportunity to, like my previous point, change and grow for the better. But like I said, they can't even look at me. So in line with number eight, number nine. If someone tells you that you hurt them, you do not get to decide whether you did or did not. Oftentimes we can say things or do things that hurt someone and we're not aware of it. If they let us know that we hurt them, you don't get to say, I didn't hurt you. You can say, I didn't mean to, but I acknowledge that I did, so I am sorry. There is no harm in apologizing. There's no harm in letting someone know that you're aware of what you did wrong and acknowledging that they're hurt. When you hurt someone, whether it was intentional or not, say sorry. There is nothing wrong with saying sorry. Swallow your pride and say sorry. And mean it. Don't just say it to get it over with. Say it and mean it. Number 10, there is no harm in asking. Oftentimes, your opportunities will be opened up. Opened up? Yeah. <laughs> your opportunities become wider, broader, if you just ask. And I'm gonna use a very shallow example, but let's just say I liked someone and I never told them, I never let them know. That's just gonna hurt me in the process. It's gonna be like, oh, why isn't this person noticing all the things I'm doing for them? Why are I like this, like that, blah, blah, blah. That's just gonna hurt me. Whereas if I just told the person, hey, I like you, do you want to try and become something more? Whether that person said yes or no, that automatically gives you so many more options as to what you can do next. I know it can be difficult to muster up the courage, but honestly, just, just ask. Number 11, lucky number because it's my birthday. <laughs> um, it is okay to cut people off without them knowing. That being said, it's also okay for people to cut you off without you knowing. Kind of in relation to number eight, sometimes you're not gonna get an apology, but you're just gonna have to accept it. Let it, let it happen. It's, a lot of us are just trying to live the best life we could possibly live. And sometimes that means that certain energies just don't vibe with one another, so just cut it. Oftentimes I feel a lot better when I cut off certain people, and so I had to acknowledge that maybe some other people felt better without me in their life, and that's okay. Number 12, people will believe what they want to believe. So a lot of times it's not worth explaining why they're quote unquote wrong. Um, I personally have had so many instances where people would believe the rumors more than they would believe me, the truth. Simply because what they heard works better with their story, with how their mind works. And I wasted so much time trying to prove that, no, that's not true, this is the truth. But they just wouldn't believe me. My mother always told me, so long as you're living your truth, so long as you know the truth, you don't need to prove it. The right people will believe you and the wrong people won't. Number 13, sometimes it's better not to choose between two evils. I know oftentimes we can have choices and we're gonna choose the lesser evil, but there are some instances when the decision is really quote unquote evil. And if they really are so bad, just, do your best to find another option. I've had so many people rant to me about how they can't choose between two things because they're both bad things. And it's like, then why, why choose it? In my, my opinion, like, why choose to do something bad? And a lot of times when I ask them, did you try to find a better option? Like an option that's quote unquote good? I'd be like, no. Why not? Number 14. Being alone does not equate to being lonely. Don't get me wrong. I feel a little bit lonely. <laughs> uh, 
because I have been alone for a while. So, yes, I feel a little lonely, but um, this is something that I learned in my 21st year because sometimes I would eat out alone and I would watch movies by myself, I would go out for a drive by myself, but that didn't mean I was lonely, I was just physically alone. And being alone is not bad. If you haven't eaten alone at a restaurant, try it. It's great. I used to be so scared of it when I was young, but it's awesome. Like, it's just, it's so, it's less stressful, honestly. Number 15, no matter what you do, someone out there will have something to say. So you might as well do whatever the hell you want. Despite people saying bad things, there will also be people saying good things. And the good always outweighs the bad. Number 16, keeping your feelings to yourself is a bad idea. Do not bottle up your feelings, but don't tell everyone how you feel. You don't have to tell everyone everything. The select few who need to know are the ones who want to, and you'll know when they want to know. Number 17, loving someone does not mean they're obligated to love you back. I was always so sure that loving someone, taking care of someone, would then have them love you and take care of you in return. That's not the case. It's really not. A lot of people will not acknowledge the love and care you give. There's this quote I've been seeing going around lately, and it's, you cannot love someone into changing. Let's not waste our time. Let's not waste our love. Give love, but don't waste it. Number 18, choose to listen to understand, not listen to respond. And this is something that um, I heard from one of my good friends, Zach. I realized that sometimes I'm gonna hear someone's side of the story, but in my head, I already have the intention of having something to say in return. And that would um, hinder my understanding of their story. Whereas if you just listen, if you just completely listen, you give yourself a chance to just understand someone. Number 19, there is absolutely nothing wrong with taking a break and putting yourself first. This is a lesson I learned in my 21st year because it's a lesson I didn't know that much about when I was 19, actually. Um, 18, 19. I was supposed to take a leave of absence from school because my mental health was not great at all. But I thought, no, I have to graduate on time. I have to finish, I have to do this, I have to do that. And so, you know, I pushed through, I did finish on time, but it just made my mental health so much worse. Looking back, I realized I should have taken that break because I could have gotten mentally better, I could have done better in school, but that's an opportunity that's gone now so honestly to anyone out there who needs a break take it believe me take it number 20 always remember that another man's trash is another man's treasure a lot of people can be so negative about people say moving on not just from relationships but from friendships as well or like maybe even jobs don't don't bring people down for finding what was right for them just because it wasn't right for you, okay? Another man's trash is another man's treasure. I hate the term trash and treasure, but that's the quote, right? <laughs> Last one, 21. 21. <laughs> um, definitely not the least. Remember that there's no one else on this earth who's exactly like you. Oftentimes I can think, oh, I'm not as good as this person, I'm not as smart as this person, not as talented, not as pretty, not as skinny, not as voluptuous. <laughs> but I realized there's no one like me and that took me so long to understand. Again, similar to point number two, I think it was, beauty is subjective. Like, not everyone's gonna agree on what's right and what's wrong. So you might as well just do you and be proud of you and be happy with you because there's only one you. Might as well love and care for and understand the you that 
you are. <laughs> so that was the 21 lessons I learned in my 21st year of life. It's crazy to me that I'm 22 now. Ah, that's so weird. It's so weird to say. I didn't think I would make it this far, honestly. But here I am. And hopefully the things I've just mentioned helps someone cope with something or helps them deal with a certain issue. Because if I had someone tell me all these things when I was younger, I would have appreciated it a lot. <laughs> but only so much I can do about it now. The only thing I can do now is move forward and continue learning, <sighs> no matter how difficult it is. That being said, thank you so much for choosing to watch my video. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. It really, really would mean the world to me. And I hope to see you back here next week. Bye!